Hello everyone, welcome to our talk. In this all the zero days, can hackers launch a zero day RC attack on popular software only with Chromium and this? In this talk, I will introduce how we use Chromium and this pop-up configurators uh, in many popular software, hoping to draw attention to browser security in application software. This is our first DEF CON presentation. Let's introduce ourselves first. We are all security researchers at Tencent Security Xuanwu Lab. I'm Bo Han Liu, mainly engaged in browser security. I'm also a Google Chrome bug hunter. And Zhong Wang is our co-speaker. He mainly engaged in browser security and kernel security. He found several bugs in Apple Safari, Linux kernel, and VirtualBox. Another co-speaker is Guan Li. He is co-founder and former captain of Recapping CTF team. He primarily focuses on system and software security. Currently, focus on LLM with security. This, there are six sections in this talk. Let's begin. First is introduction. As a browser security researcher, I researched the Chromium bugs for a while and wrote many ND exploits. And I can do a little reversing, but I know little about web security. Given those skills, can I find zero day RC bugs in public software? And if so, what can I do to make this work easier? Now, let's take a look uh, at how Chromium has been integrated into public software. Firstly, there, uh, there is Chromium based development which include the default mobile browsers. Second, there are browser components for various uh, programming language. For example, the Electron framework is primarily used for a software developed in uh, Node.js, for C++, Java, and Dolphin language. CEF is also a commonly used library. Additionally, the Qt web engine plugins is uh, commonly used in Qt and Chromium may also be present in other popular sublime chains. So Chromium is everywhere in software. Based on data from CV and Google Project Zero, Chrome may be found around 3, 000, uh, 300 vulnerabilities with CV ID each year. Of those, around 10 vulnerabilities each year are from in the wild attacks, and also many of those vulnerabilities can be transformed into render RC through detailed analysis. Those vulnerabilities can also be introduced into po uh, popular software through the sublime chain mentioned above. Google has a, a open attitude towards uh, vulnerability disclosure, and uh, the bug detail will be made publi public after being fixed uh, 40 uh, weeks. With the bug detail and the uh, unit test in patch, attackers can quickly make exploit code. Sometimes it's even a zero day bug for the stable version of Chrome itself. We strongly oppose the disclosure of vulnerability details before they are fixed. But it's hard to see, hackers has a lot of priori knowledge for Chromium-based software attacks. Therefore, we conducted the experiment on some popular software to see how long the introduction of those vulnerabilities can have an impact. Let's start with the defini uh, definition of RC window period. RC Windows period equals the time the vulnerabilities was fixed in the software, minus the time the vulnerability was exploitable. Since it's hard to precisely uh, determine the T exploitable, we use a new calculation method to roughly uh, describe the uh, software's RC Windows period. The method is called update gate, which is the time difference between the software's update time and its Chromium component update time. The larger the difference, the higher the likelihood of the software being exploitable during the period. In our experiment, we select some popular software on the market, uh, including Slack, uh, Spec, Skype, Discord, and others. The experiment was divided into three steps. The first step, we download the software's old version through mirror state. Uh, the second step was identify the browser component in the software, their version and the release dates. 
Uh, in the stack step, we calculated the update gap to describe the software's RC windows period. We use our database, which concludes over 200 POCs to assess in testing. Those POCs was, were used to search for high-risk uh, exploitable vulnerabilities during the period. The final results uh, varied uh, greatly, with different uh, software having an uh, update gap uh, ranging from 9 to 800 days. We worked from components with re relatively uh, independent and updated more frequently. On the other hand, Dropbox hardly updated its Chromium component. The rest of the software mainly used the uh, Electron or LibCF component, which most update periods over 90 days. Some softwares has a longer update uh, period. This code has an average update time of 305 days. The shortest update period is over uh, 70 days. As a result, 90 versions has a long RC period, uh, which was demonstrated at Black Hat USA in 2022. Other software, such as Slack, has more frequent updates with a patch period of uh, 30 days. However, when it hit a zero-day disclosure, they didn't deal with it uh, in time. For example, while well, Chrome Zero Day Bug was public disclosed, disclosed on GitHub on April 2021, and Slack just released its new version the day before that day. However, it wasn't uh, uh, until June that the bug was patched. It has an RC window period of almost two months. After analyzing our data, we have come to several conclusions. Firstly, RC windows period exists in most software, leaving attackers a uh, period to find the end uh, bugs for exploit. Second, a software built on the Electron framework tend to have a shorter RC windows period due to the lower uh, code complaint, which make updates easier to implement. Finally, we have observed that uh, many companies has increased their update frequency at specific times. Uh, however, even with those effects, uh, RC Windows period still exists. Uh, let's come to attack surface and vulnerability discovery. For desktop software, developers use browser components to display specific pages and trigger certain uh, client-side behavior in specific scenarios, making Land side uh, development more convenient and universal. However, for hackers, during the RC window period, it's easy to launch zero day RC attacks when they can control the loaded page. This kind of attack has many advantages for hackers, such as having many exploits with uh, end day uh, vulnerabilities and uh, no domain specific requirements. Therefore, all hackers need to find is a situation where they can control the loading page. So what's the uh, scenarios that uh, developers tend to overlook? Uh, the questions arise, what is the function of browser components? What's, what code runs in the uh, browser component? Let's start with how they are developed. For Electron, all codes are developed by uh, Node.js. It's divided into main process and uh, render process. A commode commute through IPC. All code is stored in a resource folder, and there are less modification to electron framework code. So it's easy to locate the uh, source code. Uh, if compo uh, compressed, uh, we can also uh, recover them from the ASAR format. As for debugging, since there are less modification to Electron uh, framework code, most of the time we can just use command flag to open its internal uh, development tools, like inspect or remote debugging port, uh, just like this uh, flag. 
Uh, debug tool is a universal uh, electron framework debugging tools. We can see here. Uh, it is also uh, completed in this method. CEF is another popular component. Here we use libcf C++ library as an example. From the perspective of uh, uh, development, the code impacted by uh, developers is divided into two parts. Uh, the privileged API function implemented by uh, in C or C++ is used to uh, impact uh, client behaviors that can't be uh, impacted by uh, browser components. The other part is the local resource code implemented by the HTML, which is the code running in the browser component and used it to display the interface. Uh, in the uh, development logic, uh, it uh, initialized first and then registered, uh, rege registered a, a parsing and the processing logic of the privileged domain and then uh, register the privileged API function to uh, form a JS object for the local resource code to call. And finally, load the local resource from the uh, perspective of the CF library is actually a series of calls to uh, exploit the uh, function. For CF, uh, its feature are uh, uh, it exists in the form of a, a dynamic uh, lab, lib, uh, link library, and the use of CF is more uh, flexible and more check before use. A provided API is implied by C or C++ and the a local resource uh, code is implemented by HTML. And the location of the local resource file is uncertain and uh, the file may be uh, encrypted. So are there any common debugging method? Uh, yes, uh, you can hook the API in libcf and then get and modify what we want. For example, the developer uh, will use CF screen reader create for uh, fail CF zip reader create or other function to load the resource. We can get a uh, field location and uh, uh, decrypted password via hooking the info uh, transfer between API functions as shown here. Uh, as for debugging, although developers call CF in, uh, initialized with uh, static conf uh, parameters, uh, we can still dynamically modify the remote debugging port a parameter to gen uh, develop capabilities by hook. And we can also build more powerful debug, debug tools based on a uh, development mode. Let's take a look at some cases that uh, developers tend to overlook. First is a white list of load, a loaded load. Uh, developers are only allowed to use the browser components to open specific uh, pages such as the official home page. Other pages will be opened by default system browser, maybe completed by uh, calling shell is cute open. For example, uh, Scap has the same logic here. The first way to bypass check is the page redirection. Directory, here are three main ways hyperlink navigation, uh, 3OX reduction, uh, JavaScript navigation, uh, its principle is that uh, this kind of check is with uh, handling click, and then the page was loaded in Chromium uh, component. And the sub subsequent uh, jump in Chromium will no longer trigger the check logic again. So SSO is a good pass tool as shown in the figure on the right. The following is a demo that uses page redirection to imply RCE attack is an software. For security region, all the software mentioned in this topic will not disclose the product information. Okay, after click, uh, uh, Calculator is here. Another point is the checker itself. 
uh, like an uh, incorrect regular expression or an uh, incorrect uh, tri triple check. This is another real world case. The checker uses a long uh, regular expression. They ask check GPT uh, and run here. It told me that there are many domains easily uh, registered by hackers can pass the check, for example, abcdjd.hk. This is the demo mentioned before. It's also an AM software. After by passing the check uh, URL check, we can easily load our uh, HTML code. Uh, we can easily pop up the calculator. In addition, another point is the uh, special URL handler. There are two main aspects. One is the scheme registered in the system registry, and the other is the custom domain registered in the browser component. Since they are a privileged domain, it's easy to miss some check while operating uh, in them. The follow is the demo use this method. We can see that IAM software is a, a vulner, uh, vulnerable area in this development case. Okay. The next is paid code injection. Uh, it's a classic top, but let's focus on the unique aspects of XXS in Chromium-based software. Here are three key differences. Firstly, XSS type. Uh, in web security, XSS typically include uh, reflective stored and uh, DOM-based XSS. In Chromium-based software, resources are often stored locally, so uh, XSS in this context is typically DOM-based. Secondly, uh, this uh, vulnerability discovered method in uh, web security, the code that handler user input is typically located on the uh, server side. Uh, so the bug uh, discovered mainly through uh, black, black box uh, testing. However, with the code location tools we previously developed with, them, we, uh, we can white box code review in Chromium-based software. Thirdly, uh, input source. Uh, in uh, web security, input uh, usually comes from URL par parameters or the database. In Chromium-based software, there may be fewer uh, URL parameters, but more unique input sources, uh, which we will discuss, uh, discuss in the next section. Based on uh, those features, as a re uh, researcher, no little uh, web security, I mainly use the following method to discover access in local resources. Firstly, I use the tools we uh, developed to de decrypt local resources, then I identify the unprotected resources files without uh, CSP, and filter out the uh, input point that can be controlled. Finally, I trace whether uh, this input can trigger code injection. This, match, uh, this image is a real-world case I found. I have uh, abstracted the key code, and you can see that the get URL param function process uh, the parameters in the URL and put them into the uh, page using inner HTML in two, finally leading to XSS. Another thing to note is that uh, XSS vulnerability can also be introduced uh, through the sublime chain. For example, the ECO 2959 of Tepro. Attackers can execute JS code in Tepro by exploring uh, access uh, vulnerability in the Mermaid library and then use the provided API to achieve RCE. We can also use the uh, Chrome ND vulnerabilities from two years ago, such as CVE 2017 uh, 5070 to achieve RCE2. Here is a demo of 
the exploit for this case, which shows that a Chromium ND bug can also do the same things as a privileged API bug. The iframe feature is often used in note-taking or document applications to make a page display more convenient. However, when the scope of the iframe uh, excludes the uh, limit, it can also cause uh, security questions. This is more dangerous than in web security because it can be exploited without provided API or specific domain need. We also find an RC bug in a popular, a popular note-taking software using this trick. Uh, we would have uh, liked to release uh, it here as an example, but it's being fixed, so we can't disclose uh, it here. For a desktop software, uh, it may face much more uh, complex situations than a website, such as no network, uh, uh, speed requirements. Uh, this requires some local cache to solve this uh, problem. When reading uh, or writing data, the cache is modified first and then updated with the ser server through uh, communications. Uh, in this logic, the uh, developers uh, usually trust the cache and don't check it again uh, when updating or loading it. Cache data can exist locally in various format forms, such as a database, a JSON, or a custom uh, function uh, format. So, how do we find them? Uh, the easiest way is to monitor the program's fail read and write operations. The image on the right shows the applications that use uh, that use uh, a SQLite to store cache data. You can see that when the database content is modified, uh, there are no valid check on the data uh, on the data when uh, it's loaded, allowing any frame to be uh, inserted. Here is another interesting example. In a certain application, I found that when three-party components uh, were added, the app insert an frame here. Uh, into the uh, page, but the uh, but the uh, SRC attribute is uh, strictly displayed. But in the local cache, I found a custom uh, pro property called HF. I modified it to access code and reopen the uh, program. The page was modified to any. HTML code here, which means that we bypass the check by modifying the local cache. And, and another, another uh, when I assessed the, the web version of this app, I found that the web page also ch changed to uh, any HTML code here. This means that the server didn't check the update of the local cache and the vulnerabilities become uh, stored XSS. Therefore, by using the code uh, injection, we bypass the validation and uh, achieve the RCE. And further, uh, we polluted the server, which can lead to more uh, remote attacks. Okay. Some applications also allow developers to uh, develop plugins and update them to the store. Here's providing more uh, convenient extension functions. Software give uh, plugins uh, developers more uh, functionality, but uh, plugins usually need to be officially uh, reviewed before put on the store. With the uh, browser components, hackers may use it to bypass uh, plugin reviews. For example, when a plugin is reviewed, the page in the plugin is a normal page. But when it's put on the market, the uh, website is redirected to a page with expired code. 
thereby realizing a water, water hole attack. The following is an example of IntelliJ idea uh, software. The Metacurious plugin is loaded. An attacker can use the browser component to achieve RCE. So when a plugin is reviewed, it's necessary by pay attention to the URL in it. Now in the video, we load the plugin. Okay. Some functions may have a arbitrary uh, page loading process, such as the pre-rendering of crawlers or nodes. For example, the pursuit was found a RC bug in a, a, a passive a scanning function in 2021. Um, now, our co-speaker, Wang Zhong, will give the other part of this talk. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Wang Zhong, the co-speaker of this topic. I will finish the last part. Given the short duration of RC window period, it is crucial to develop its voice quickly when it comes to tap when abilities, a common technique is to use optimized functions to create inconsistencies that ultimately lead to time confusion. However, for use of free box, there doesn't seem to be a publicly universal exploit method. Here, we propose a universal exploit method for V8 32-bit use of free box, which will be demonstrated in Chromium version 91. Let's start by discussing some relevant background knowledge. We its minimal garbage collection recyc recycles objects from the young generation, which divided memory into two spaces. Newly allocated objects are put into the from space, and when the first garbage collection is called, it identifies surviving objects and copies them from the from space to the to space, updating object pointers. Then the from space and to space are swapped and the next round of garbage collection is performed. During scavenging, there is also an additional set of root objects, which are pointers from old space to new space objects. We eat uses red barriers to track these references. When the garbage collection identifies relevant references in the old space, it does not reclaim the objects in the new space. Here is a Chrome issue 1130-7610. This was caused by a missing red barrier when generating the last index object for a red expression object, when last index access the SMI range and the red expression is in the old space, well, the last index object is in the new space. The garbage collection mistakenly identifies the object as reclaimable due to the lack of reference information, resulting in a use of a free vulnerability. In V8, there is a type of string called one byte internalized string. Its memory layout is as follows. From front to back, they are the objects map, hash, string length, and the string's content. The core idea we used was to forge a string with an extremely large length and place the target object after the string in memory. Then, we can use the search method of the string to find the address of the target object after the mark. Thus, we can construct the address of primitive. Using the same technique, 
we can place a JS array after the fake string. By using the string's auto bounce right, we can modify the element member of the JS array to point to arbitrary address and achieve arbitrary memory read and write. To fix such a string, we need to create a fixed string map. V8 uses map to identify object types, so our core technique is hip spring. We can hip spring a large number of array buffer objects to obtain a stable address, and then forge the necessary members of the string map at this address. Finally, we place the fixed string in a JS array and allocate a large number of JS array objects to occupy the last index placeholder. The fixed string is placed on the left of the JS array and the forged string object is on the right. Here is a demonstration video of our successful exploration in Chrome version 91. So, as for Chromium-based software, we found, firstly, a little bug or feature can lead to RCE attack. Secondly, there is lack of attention to the attack paths of browser vulnerabilities now. So, the attack surface is relatively rudimentary, and hackers also can bypass mitigation directly using powerful Chromium bugs. This section is about how to achieve RCE attack without sandbox escape bug. The sandbox is a security protection mechanism of Chromium. Even if a hacker gets the render RCE, he still cannot get the full execution permission. This includes mandatory access controlled environment, isolated process when HTML, rendering, and JavaScript execution. And finally, the limited resource access and limited IPC or kernel interaction access. The end day of sandbox escape is much less than the end day of render RCE. So how can we achieve RCE in sandbox-enabled software without a Chromium sandbox escape bug? First, let's see what's the difference between Chrome-based Chromium software and Chrome browser. The one is privileged API. It is used to implement some client-side behavior in specific cases, such as, such as uploading files and downloading files. For renderer, it is a serious of JavaScript objects. For browser, it is a series of handler code. Different frameworks uh, have different, different implementations. The principle is to register some JavaScript objects in the context of the render process. And when the objects are called, we can execute the implemented handler in the browser process through IPC call. Based on this idea, there are usually two implementation logic for the privileged API. The first one checks the URL loaded by the browser component when it is initialized. If it is a specific domain, register the privileged API in the loaded context. At runtime, only the privileged domain can obtain the JavaScript object. So when we call in some function from this API, the browser processes calls it, calls it without checking the source domain. The second logic is to register the privileged API object no matter what domain it is at initialization. And then the developer can check the domain when the privileged API is called. There are some problems with both methods. For the first one, what if a 
Land privileged the web view gets a privileged context. For the second one, how to properly check the IPC access is from privileged domain. The research on Electron has become relatively mature. In August 2018, Masto shared research on contest isolation, which is used to isolate the contest between the render process and preload. If this configuration is disabled, even with sandbox protection enabled, the renderer process can also call privileged functions exported from preload, such as shell doc, shell dot open external function. At Black Hat Asia in 2019, Luca shared his research on preload. He discovered that even with sandbox protection enabled, preload dot JS may still access certain native node classes and some electron modules. Attackers can use prototype pollution to execute arbitrary IPC calls. At Black Hat USA in 2022, a sandbox bypass method was demonstrated when the renderer process could load the preload.js file in a child frame by overwriting the node integration in sub subframe members of the web preference of the contest. We can also overwrite the contest prefers contest isolation and disable CISO in new renderer process. Then we can send an unauthorized IPC call with prototype pollution. We also found some interesting and wide ranging issues with the second model. But since the renderers are working on a fix, we will share the details when it's fixed. We will make some security recommendations for Chromium based software in two aspects. Firstly, it is necessary to update the latest version of the Chromium. Secondly, for software with high coupling, it's better to use a stable development version and introduce security patches with software updates. Thirdly, we should enable the Chromium sandbox. And last, we need to disable unused software functionalities or enable internal mitigations. For developers, we can add backend validation and front-end rendering validation. Follow the principle of latest privilege. Both privilege domain range and privileged API function. Enable universal mitigation such as CSP and be vigilant about input from unexpected sources. Here is the conclusion and takeaways of this topic. In this topic, we verify that a large number of Chromium-based software have RCE window period and then we summarize some software attack surfaces that cooperate with the RCE window period, which makes the hackers can launch their day attack with Chromium end days and give real world examples. And we share a general V8 used after free exploit method in 32 bit, which may help make exploit faster. At last, we provide some security recommendations to help strengthen the security of Chromium-based software. At last, thanks to all the partners for their contribution to this topic. Here is the list. Okay, thanks for your listening. Here is the references of this topic. If you have any problem, you can contact us with email or on Twitter.